In this video, we're just going to do some algebra. So we're going to look at that margin of error formula and we're just going to manipulate it algebraically. So we're just going to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, etc., to isolate a specific variable. Uh, and once we do that, then we're just going to use that new formula to say, find the sample size that we would need to ensure a certain margin of error. So the question is why? Why would we want to do that? Well, let's say a researcher wants to conduct a statistical study with a high level of confidence and a reasonably small margin of error. So he or she wants the results to be close together. That means that margin of error is small. So by using a larger sample size, his estimates are based on more data. Um, and this results in an increase in the level of confidence without increasing the margin of error. So the question might be, how large of a sample does he need? Now, you might say, well, who cares? Just make it a million or a billion. But keep in mind that there's often a cost associated with that. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what is the minimum sample size that he must have in order to obtain his requirements. Let's just do the algebra together to come up with our final formula in our book. It just gives us the formula, but some of you actually like math and I'd like to take you through how it happened and it's just algebra. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take each side divided by that critical value, Z of alpha over two. And on the right side, those two cancel. And on the left side, I have E divided by Z of alpha over two. And on the right side, I'm left with sigma divided by the square root of n. Now I want to get the square root of n so that it's no longer a denominator. So now I have the square root of n times all of this is equal to alpha. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm actually going to, um, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to confuse anyone. So I have e over z alpha over two. And then on this side, I just have sigma. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each side times z, I keep making that an exponent, z of alpha over two divided by e, z of alpha over two divided by e. And what happens is that e cancels, the z of alpha over two cancels, and I get the square root of n. And on the right side, my numerator includes both sigma and z of alpha over two, and my denominator includes e. And now I just want n, so I'm going to square each side. So my solution is that n is sigma times critical value divided by e quantity squared. So this is how we're going to find n if we are given sigma, or critical value, and the margin of error. So let's do an example now. Let's say we are trying to determine the minimum sample size needed if we wish to be 90% confident that this sample mean is within two units of the population mean. Within two units means our population mean is going to be in the middle and two units to the right or two units to the left. And so hopefully we can recognize that this is our E value. This is C, which doesn't tell us much because notice there's no C in this equation. Um, but we know that the confidence level is um, 90% and the population standard deviation or sigma is 8.4. So the only thing that is not given to us that we have to do a little bit of work for is what is the critical value, which is the using the 90%. So again, we talked about how to find this and we talked about how to do it using Excel as well. If I have 90% in the center, then that means 10% is in the tail. So this tail has 5% and this tail has 5% because it has to add up to one. So what am I putting into Excel? Well, this guy right here is 0 0.95. And so that's what I'm putting into Excel. I'm saying um, equals norm S 
inverse of 0 0.95. And that's going to spit out 1.645. That's where this value comes from. So that's the only thing really that we need Excel for. Or um, if you want to use the standard normal table, you can. But again, my focus in this course is on Excel. So all I have to do then is use my calculator or Excel to find the 1.645, multiply it by the 8.4, which is sigma, divide it by E, which is 2. Once I find that solution, I square it, and that's about 48. So we always are going to round up, so about 48. So the sample size that we need to construct, a 90% 90, 90 confidence interval for the population mean with the margin of error of 2 is at least 48. Now, as I went through the Hawks textbook and did all of the certifications myself, I also added this little part to my formula spreadsheet that I used. So what we just did was we found the correct sample size. So I'm focusing on this part down here. Now, keep in mind that the max error in our example was two, sigma was 8.4, and my confidence level was 0.9. And I have set up Excel to A, find the critical value. And again, how did I do that? I'm just using norm inverse, or I should have used norm.s.inverse. And then I wouldn't need the comma zero comma one, but it's going to give me the same thing. And notice what I've done is just as I did before. If it was 0.9, it gave me 0.9 plus half of whatever was left over after I subtracted 0.9 from 1. So really it's norm S inverse of 0.95. And then this is just that formula that we came up with together. So I'm taking the critical value multiplied by the standard deviation of the population and dividing it by E and then squaring it. So that's that um, arrow or caret and then 2. And so that's finding the solution for me. So that's the exact solution that I found when I did all the work by hand, but now I've let Excel do the work for me. Now, I didn't include any of these questions in your um, video, but I did also have um, a situation where I was given the lower limit. So say I'm given a lower limit of 12.2, an upper limit of 13.4, and I was trying to find E or the center, so X bar, remember, is the center, and then E is how far do we go in each direction. So I've also set up Excel to do that for me. B3 minus B2 divided by 2, so I'm finding the difference divided by 2. And this one is just the average of the two values, which would be the center. So hopefully that will help you a little bit on your certifications as well. Up next, we'll take a look at the student's t-distribution.